Well, Sam, I also want to touch base on some news that went down earlier this week. Very big decision from the Colorado uh, State Supreme Court uh, ruling against paraplegic medical marijuana patient Brandon Coates. Now, they said that employers can fire employees for off-duty marijuana use. What does this mean for employment law and the legalization movement in Colorado and beyond? Yeah, it's, it's you know, I was speaking on a panel the other night and someone said, well, you know, this is where justice and law don't always line up. That, you know, Mr. Coates was about the most sympathetic plaintiff that, that could have come forward, right? He is someone who was a very sincere medical marijuana patient that he used it for seizures. He said, and, and no one I think disputed, that it was very hard for him to work without his medicine and if he was able to use it, he was able to work and you know be productive and right. not be on disability. Uh, so it was a situation not just where uh, marijuana wasn't in, in, in negatively influencing his work, it made his work possible. Nonetheless, his employer dish network had a zero tolerance policy. They tested him, he tested positive, and they fired him. Um, and the, what it really came down to was Colorado's lawful off-duty conduct statute. It says you can't fire someone for what they do when they're not at work so long as it's legal behavior. He said, well, Amendment 64, Amendment 20, this is legal behavior. The Supreme Court unanimously said, no, it's not. It's still illegal under federal law. That means it's not lawful. If it's not lawful, he can be fired for engaging in it. So, you know, the, the Colorado Supreme Court gets the last word on this. Mm -hmm. The legislature could fix it. They could say, no, 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 what we meant was lawful under Colorado law. You can't be fired for engaging in something that's lawful under state law. But after three courts have already ruled one way, is the state legislature going to speak up in a situation well, so like this? What's interesting is all they were interpreting was, what do we think the legislature had in mind when they wrote this, right? So if the legislature says, no, that's not what we wanted to say, that's not what we meant it to say, it should say this, they have that authority. Right? The problem is that would create some tension between state and federal law, and this is really uh, an area near and dear to my heart. Um, if Dish Network says, look, we can't comply with both state and federal law, we have an obligation, I'm not saying they're right, we have an obligation to have a drug-free workplace, and that means nobody who uses drugs can come to our workplace. Mm -hmm. We have an obligation under federal law to do that, and we have an obligation under state law to allow Mr. Coates to use marijuana. Sure. So if we can't comply with both of those, the state law must be prohibited by federal law. And that's something that, you know, that's what the, the states of Oklahoma and Nebraska allege when they sued us. That's what uh, some of these private plaintiffs allege when they uh, sued. Sure. Uh, that, so the residents and the sheriffs. And the, the sheriffs, <laughs> and that's sort of the big fight that's coming. So I think the legislature may say, you know what, we, we don't want to push that issue. We'll, we'll leave things the way they are. But you're right, it leaves a lot of workers unprotected. And so what does this mean? I mean, getting back to the question, for locals in Colorado, for people elsewhere, is this precedent setting? As in, like, are, is this going to be referenced in Washington State next year and Oregon the year after that? I, I think it will. There are certain states, uh, Delaware, uh, I think Maryland and, and Arizona, that have written into their medical marijuana bills some employee protections. Oh, Colorado wow. is not one of those states. Sure. Um, and so, you know, in, in those states without those protections, it's quite likely the courts uh, will, will look at these provisions, right? Um, but what, what this really is, is just a symptom of how weird things get when states are legalizing things that remain prohibited under federal law, right? It means you can lose your federal benefits. It means you can lose your parental rights. It means, you know, it's hard for businesses to do their banking. All of that is a symptom of the same thing, which is states are saying this thing is fine while the federal government continues to prohibit it.